the biggest challenge is always body work. Yep. And more and more we're putting on the fancy body work because air, looks, styling, all that yep. stuff. And that's where Land Rover, Range Rover kind of does it really well is that they manage to meld the style and the capability. Mm -hmm. But when I get into a vehicle that doesn't have air suspension, then Land Rovers always try to engineer their way around things. Right. That's why it's air suspension instead of a solid, solid axle. Because okay. normally a solid axle is what you want for off-roading, right? One wheel gets compressed up, yep. the other stretches down. Right. You maintain your height. With air suspension, one wheel would compress, but the other one just does right. nothing. Now, with, like, let me challenge the thinking yeah. on that. Because how good technology with train systems, traction control, having wheels contact, yes, it's always great, but it's not like it was back in the day because yeah, I could throw up a wheel or two in the air, but the computer's gonna know that and it's gonna just take the power away and throw it somewhere where it has traction. That is exactly, well, that that's the beauty. That's where the four by four IA screen becomes yep. great to teach with and to explain because you're exactly right. It's not a case of wheel in the air is the same thing as wheel in a butt patch of ice on snow, no right. traction. All it is is a lack of traction. Right. And what we used to do is we'd have to pulse the brakes on that wheel that had tr uh, that had no traction mm -hmm. to force power to the wheel with traction. Right. Now with the technology, if the wheel's on the ground and the system can sense it, how do I manage that power? Yeah. And that's where again it it's a fine line to walk because the vehicles that are smaller with, you know, not the same capacity mm -hmm. of, of height and bodywork mm -hmm. are also the ones that don't necessarily have the locking suspension uh, the locking differential right with the evoke with the discovery sport we're now cheating we've got the active drive line with the clutch packs and the rear differential right mm -hmm. so you're right it it's a case of two things really i'd argue one can i get power to the wheel with traction and mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about there. right the other side of it is, how do I maintain that clearance? Right. And that's something that with air suspension, one wheel's compressed, the other one stretches down. So it's like a fake solid axle. Yeah. With the coil spring, mm -hmm. it doesn't have that same reach, that same flexibility. Okay. So the tightness of the body, the way the wheels are in the four corners, mm -hmm. means that that is how it's trying to manage that clearance right but i mean you know at the end of the day we got across yeah yeah it's, yeah and you know it's always you can look at it it's like you take uh an, an suv in that class so mm -hmm. let it be um a crv and mm -hmm. i was not in the luxury but you know that type of thing yeah. um it those might get across but there's higher risk of damage higher risk of wear and tear the land rover will get across slower and easier and and that's the whole idea that's it right the idea is and to your point everyone plays on road and on road in winter a lot of systems do the same thing a lot of systems have the same success mm -hmm. but when you start to get to the edge of that capability a bigger snowstorm more lack of traction yep. that's when like you said higher risk of damage higher risk of failure high all that stuff right but what Land Rover does that no one realizes and why days like this are important, look at how much further my limit is. Exactly. You know, it's when you, I, I buy tools. I like power tools. Yep. And I'll always buy a tool slightly bigger than what I actually need. Correct. Because it's always better to need it and mm -hmm. have it than mm -hmm. to need it and not have it. That's it. Yeah. No, 100%. So, you know, that's why everyone sees the first 10% of what their vehicles can do. Yeah. The other 90% are what days like this are about where trust me if we went out here in a, in a dumb 1980s 1990s even early 2000s jeep wrangler yep. eh, name it pickup truck whatever where you need to know when do i throw the switch for the differential mm -hmm. when do i roll on the throttle yep all of that stuff we now have the technology that's making it so i can take anyone out and look at the success we have and it even, it doesn't make it boring, but you're kind of there going, well, that, what's the big deal? Exactly, exactly. It's when I first took my, my older brother off mm -hmm. in, in this and uh, I showed him how the um, all-terrain progress control worked. And I, I said the, the only thing that 
uh, that I kind of like. I don't want to say hate, but I yeah. I don't like is it almost takes you out like it. You're more disconnected from the off-roading experience yeah. than I grew up driving an '86 Cherokee. So I was connected because I had to do everything. Yeah. But here, the computer will do everything that's for me. It. I just stay away from anything that would damage it. Well, and that's the thing, right? Is that you hear horror stories of someone doesn't know what they're doing. They push the lever out of the way in an old truck and because they couldn't put their drink in, and now and, it's in low range. And then, poof. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You laugh. Right? I have heard. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a real that. thing. Yeah, I now I can sit here and be that dick and look at me push the button. Nothing and he happens. Do it exactly. If you understand now how to work with the systems. Mm -hmm. Like the steady throttle, look at the differential, understand how do I manage the power. Right. And even then, we're in auto mode now. It's like it's a digital camera, man. Look out the window. I'm driving on grass and gravel. You turn it to that. And it again, now it's working the rear a little bit more as well. Ah. So you see how it's starting to play to your point about how do I get power around? Yeah, so that, I mean, that's the big thing, right? Where how do I get the power to the wheels? Okay. And what kind of behavior am I looking for? So grass, gravel, and snow, it is very aggressive to stop any kind of wheel spin. Right. Because, because it, it's minimum torque, right? So you can even feel on the throttle pedal, it's less responsive. Yep. And it's softer. That's it. And it's not even, it's also in a higher gear. So look at us roll away down I'm the hill. I'm probably here. at fifth or sixth gear right now. That's it. If I went to mud and ruts mode now, you're going to feel an immediate downshift, I hope. Yep. There's the change. There's, There's the, change. the downshift. And now look again, it's wide open. It's not working the differentials quite as much, even when you're on the throttle, because it's looking for a slightly different behavior. Mm. So all of this stuff to your point about learning to drive in the Cherokee, I know how to drive. I'm looking at this, I see mud. I know I need to charge it a little bit. I need to let the wheels spin a bit uh -huh. to clear the tread so that I can find that traction. Mm -hmm. And now look at it work the rear diff and leave the center one alone a bit more. So it wants that rear to drive you forward, and it doesn't want to work the front too much to let you keep steering. Oh, uh, really? Is it, oh, wow, yeah, that's so cool. You see different behaviors, yeah. right? That's what this is doing. And at the end of the day, if that's too complicated, if looking out the window and going, what am I driving on? Yeah. What kind of traction do I have? Mm -hmm. It's too much for you. There's auto. Auto. And it'll, uh, as I was just telling Steve yeah. before, he's like, what's the difference between auto and the modes? And I see this comment online all the time. Auto is reactive, right? Yeah. So auto, it'll, we're driving the computers. Okay, we're in this mode, we're in this, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's taking in all the different parameters, mm -hmm. right? Whereas a more experienced driver will say, okay, no, we're in, we're coming we're up mud and ruts modes. We're proactive so I can engage it. Now the system's going to be like, all right, I'm ready for this. I'm not in anything slippery like snow. We're gonna ignore We're those there. parameters. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that is, I don't care. We're getting more and more advanced. Yeah. And we are still at the point though, where you said it, there are sensors, they're on the wheels. What kind of traction do I have? Mm -hmm. So the only thing it's ready for is what it's already driven over. Exactly. And sometimes that's too late and you're stuck, right? Yeah. It's like four wheel drive versus two wheel drive. By the time you know you need four wheel drive, you ever, you've spun out. Yeah. yeah. And so, no, I mean, there's a ton there where the more you can anticipate, the better a driver you are. It doesn't even need to be off roading. Yeah. Everywhere. Yes, right. This is driving skills, it's not off road skills. Yeah. That was, so, yeah, I, when we were in Monterey doing the Above and Beyond Tour, yeah. that was one of the things I just, I told my wife, no, you need to drive on these angles and you just, you have to, because it's just going to make you a more confident driver mm -hmm. to know how a vehicle flexes and it, when it's not just on flat ground, because you'll know how to react to stuff when you need to well, react. Look at, so right now when you learn how to drive, yeah, you learn gas, brake, steering. But mm -hmm. what you're learning is how to be predictable on the road to everyone else yep. and how to follow directions. Right. You do not learn what do you do when you're understeering? What do you do when you're oversteering? Right. What do you do when you're sliding and on that, ice? That's so imperative to know, especially climates that have a winter. Yep. Right? But, um, so that that's, you know, where this is making it so that I can take anyone out here and they have confidence that they can drive it, drive it well. I mean, gotcha. like you saw the gentleman there, say, I've never done this before, and he's out here alone in the vehicle. We're certainly going to look in, we're going to make sure he's happy, confident, yep. but I have every faith that 
if he knows how to drive, how to modulate the throttle, uh -huh. how to hold the steady throttle, he will have success out here. The hardest part is visualizing, knowing what the exterior is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, the cameras are starting to come about. Here's yeah. your fisheye view. If I keep cycling through them so you can see that. Ah, so you can just keep pressing yeah, camera. you can. Oh, look at that. 80,000 kilometers. <laughs> Learned up the new already. And then the 360, <laughs> like, it's all there, right? Yeah. Um, like, these pieces of tech, and you don't have it in this one, unfortunately, the clear sight hood. Uh, I know. Uh, the, the true 360 where you can uh, get the 3D uh, view. Right. There's a ton there. I think I'm going to have to hop out yep, here. I think no we're worries. getting close you to the... Do your thing. I'm just having a look. Why are we stopped here? Because it doesn't seem like it it's doesn't, much. Yeah. We're not, oh, there it is. It's around the corner here. I'm going to hop out, mate. Yeah. It's been no fun. worries. We're no worries. catch up when I get back. Yeah, sounds good. Here, I'll let you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's You're all good, man. You're going to run again. <laughs> Everyone's good. Everyone's prepped for HDC. All good. All right. It's like Edmonton out here. Is that like just very bare terrain? Oh, just tra no, traffic. Right. Oh, okay. Are you from Edmonton? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm from Montreal, but uh, it's not as bad as Toronto traffic, and they're not swearing at me as much as they do in Montreal. So, I, you know, I went with the happy medium. <laughs> so what were people all concerned about here? Uh, so it's not so much the climb, it's the other side where we have a nice downhill drop. Okay. And that's where we do the first demonstration to hill descent control. Gotcha. So that was what yeah. the backup was. Okay. Yeah, so that's where we're just making sure it's on. Target speed is set as low as it can be. Okay. And... The thing with all these systems, and we talked about it at lunch a bit, you don't want to just arrive and hit the button and away you go. Right. You want to know what it is, what it does. Yes. And to do that, that's again where it's nice to be out here, have someone like me saying, hey, do this, do that, prep it like this, try it in a uh -huh. controlled environment. Okay. Because then it gives you the, back to that word, confidence. Okay. It gives you that confidence that, hey, in a real world situation, I can do this. Gotcha. Um, so one, should I be in low range? I, because of the crawling speed that we're doing, yes. isn't it better? It'll it's, give you more control at lower speeds. Okay. All of this terrain is possible to do in high range. Of course. But that control at low speed is where the value of it comes in. And when we're using hill descent control, because it's also relying somewhat on engine compression, right? it's just another layer of what it's allowing you to do in the level of control you have. So you're gonna see, as you drive off on the throttle, mm -hmm. we don't have that kind of pull away. You've got much more response at low RPM. Okay. And then going down, you're gonna feel that pull back even more. So when you're ready, drive on, mate, so you're all set. I'll put it in a low range. There we go. Um, now, keeping it in D or selecting first? So, normally we would say select first for going downhill. Okay. That is good practice for all driving. Right. But nowadays with automatics even if i select first as it starts to redline to protect itself it'll shift mm. so that whole point of locking it in gear it's good practice for when you're not in a vehicle that will protect itself okay so i could really just keep it in yeah drive you could then. be in drive and now you, you see already you've got yeah. we're not feeling that kind no. of search on the throttle and as you come off of it you're not touching anything, and Nothing. look at that pullback. There's just so much. And if you want, push positive on the, yeah, you got it. And look and at the speed starts more speed. to roll a bit. And if we want again, there's a shift a second, and look at it roll forward again. Yeah. So you see the layers of the systems all working together to give you that smooth ride. In an older generation of this... It would just be engine? Or... Well, it would be both, but you'd feel the brakes doing a pulse. Pulsating instead of what they do here, which is a graduated pressure. So let's talk about that. So yeah. they're not just on off, on off, like old video game controllers. Yeah, yeah. So here it's more of a gradual control mm -hmm. and it's happening four wheels individually. Correct. In order to keep you from sliding if it was like caked in mud or something. That's it. So the idea is same as ABS, it allows you to continue to maneuver when you're on difficult terrain. So as I'm putting in steering inputs, mm -hmm. each wheel is being braked individually. Here's your target speed. We're gonna follow that speed. Okay. But it's also a case of how do I make the vehicle track with the steering input given? So like you said, if we're on mud and you're using the brake, I have one pedal to control four wheels. Right. And it's up to me to sense when that wheel locks up. Mm -hmm. When I'm using hill descent control, I have four wheels being individually controlled. And as soon as the sensor feels that lockup, let me release here and apply more over here. Mm. 
when so when would you be in a scenario where you want might want to use ultra in progress control when you're going down hills um, versus just hill descent control or do they kind of cancel each other out at a certain point that that right there is when you get into ATPC when you're getting into that and it's truly you're using it to the fullest capability mm -hmm. the two systems are the same right right so what I do what it would what, what all-terrain progress control does mm -hmm. and what hill descent control does going down the hill is the same idea just now you're on flat ground or an incline so now I'm telling the system low speed cruise control I'm right. saying I want to go 8k I want to go 8k flat up down doesn't matter so it could be looked at the other direction of it all I'm doing is I'm taking hill descent control and I'm allowing it to work on a flat piece of ground or right. I'm allowing it to work on an uphill so it, I mean you're again what we're seeing as these systems develop is how do I layer them in together and okay. what's the next iteration of how do I advance it so approaching an obstacle like this yep um, highest air setting one wheel at a time so that's why especially with the smaller vehicles you see us take them more at an angle mm -hmm. than with the larger ones because then I'm presenting a minimal angle to it right I got one wheel in mm -hmm. this one's still up and keeping my clearance right and then as this one climbs it's doing this right so you're increasing that's your clearance it. as it because if you go goes. just nose in boom boom yeah both and wheels in together you're st yeah <laughs> with the bigger vehicles it's less of an issue mm -hmm. but that's also where market market demand is mm -hmm. driving more aero more looks around the bumper how do mm -hmm. we make it more yeah just like a formula one car how many winglets can we put on it right is it really doing something on road yeah it is but remember these vehicles are built for purpose yeah part of that purpose is go on road go fast and look good doing it but then how do we balance that with go off road and still be as capable as what the badge on the back says we should be. Right. Should we use ATCP up here? If you want, go a, ahead, yeah. Demo. Yeah. So why don't you walk me through okay. what's the best way to use all terrain progress control? So we see the terrain, let's say it's a little more uh, let's say it's a little muddy more and greasy slippery. than we yeah. think. We push the button here. Okay. So you see it comes on, the icon changes. This one? Okay. But it's still a similar similar icons because now it's built on top. Okay. Set your target speed, whatever you'd like it to be. We're gonna go probably around 10k and you see that bar fill in now. So yeah. it's active. And that arrow is That's it. That's your target so speed. So this filled in bar means it's net the system's prime, it's ready. That's it. So now it's filled in, it's ready. And you see it only goes up to 30, so you can only set your target uh, speed to 30. Okay. So when you're ready, off the brakes. You're going to see the vehicle starts to take us up nice Gradually and easy. Gradually again. Because the idea with this is the minimum amount of torque necessary to get me going and then maintain my momentum. So you see there it made the shift and it's not even afraid to kind of go over it a bit mm -hmm. because it might feel that need for momentum. Okay. So it truly is, look at it maintain the speed and if you want just bump down a little bit on it because we want to see where we're going and look at how you're doing nothing. Right. And once again, this is a uh, reactive system. Yes. Because it didn't know I was about to crest a hill. Correct. Computers aren't there yet. Technologies, I'm sure with cameras yeah. and radar, yeah, well, it'll get there. We could get this. This is where the autonomous side of things, all of the systems today are still assist. Yes. You are still the driver. Yeah. You are still responsible for decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, I have tried to break all-terrain progress control. I've tried to put it in positions where it won't work it out. Okay. The only way I've been able to do that is in soft sand. Yes, same. Because that's the same thing where it needs momentum. Yeah. Everything else, it can find, okay, here's the traction, here's how I'll manage it and yep. drive forward. But when it's really soft, when it must be about your momentum, it doesn't. It can't anticipate. Right, because it doesn't know what, or, when you're going to be lifting wheels because you want to be it's you're changing you don't want to cost that speed yeah. you're changing because vehicle waiting yeah. shifts and no well you want to be applying the brakes before you really get to that shift point to right. manage it and all all of those things that you as a driver know to do to make it smoother and yeah. calmer at the same time if i get to the top of the hill and i had a rougher ride because i depended on these systems more go ahead linda did you turn around? No. No, we're behind you. We're just going nice and slow. Are 
so. We're coming, Linda. We coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the SVR, so we could actually sneak up on you, but we're on our way. I see you. Oh, there she is. Yeah, right just behind Honeymoon You mean the in-laws? She probably wants her ride. I think so. Need a lift? Hey, good looking. Can I interest you in a ride? Yeah. Because you have a range Okay, thing. okay. It's all about the mark. If it'd been a smart. Mm, <laughs> there you go. Right. Oh, I should have left. Soft door. <laughs> Actually, Kevin said was saying, I'm the only instructor that will. Actually be nice with the soft yeah, door? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, because the guys forget about it, right? Yeah. No, it was funny. Yeah. I, I I was doing some training and one and the vehicle we were demoing on had soft door. Right. So I hit it just enough to get it to close. I turned and walked away and it finished yeah. closing. And you should. Say, That's what I want to see yeah, every time. I, very often you close it soft door and then you can you turn around and then you hear the guy open up the door and blank. Yeah. Right. They yes. That, they, exactly, they think it's not closed. Oh, so like, you turn around and I like, got it, man. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, it's funny with soft door close. That's once you've had a car with that, you need it permanently. It's like yes. heads off the sleigh. Once yeah. you've had it, yeah. you need it permanently because you just, they're you just such wonderful it. convenience. It's yeah. like an AC, yeah. right? And then you don't think about you it in the yeah. vehicle and then you, you take off and then yep. you got this well, that, door I, open. I mean, the funniest open. thing that you, you see it is the park sensor. The people that have always had it and now suddenly they're in a vehicle without it, mm -hmm. the three foot gap they'll leave because they yeah, don't know because the they don't know the difference. Yeah. So no, when, once yeah. you've had those conveniences, it's like, oh yeah, I guess I gotta have them all the time. <laughs> uh, but you still have to be cautious. Yes. Yes. It's, you know, I mean, well, as you said, still, assist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's there to assist. assist. Well, if you not replace. Yeah. If you're in reverse and it doesn't beep and you hit a bollard. It's not JLR. Yeah. It's like, no, no. It's... But when we done the urban, uh, we done an urban event with the Range Rover Evoque when the uh, park assist exactly yeah. you know, started out. So we were there to show people how it works, and they were, you know, they were behind the wheel. And then we would say to them, "Okay, two hands on the steering wheel." Mm -hmm. uh, foot. And then we give all the information, and then just, just release your foot, you know, slightly off the brake, and then it will, you know. People will just, as they were removing, <laughs> they take out everything off. Everything right? off, like <laughs> the hands on the brake. Yeah, like, right? No, it's like no, you still have to steer. Like it's connected, you right? Know? Well, the, the worst is now BMW. You don't even need to touch the pedals for self parking mm -hmm. anymore. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. Yeah. Why? Well, and this is part of the conversation we're having in training. Is like, okay, is that good or bad? And. It depends on where you fall on. Do you want autonomous driving or not? Mm -hmm. We're still, and especially JLR, these are driver's vehicles. Yes. You buy them because you enjoy driving. Yeah. So yeah. you should still want that input. Yep. Now, if you're there going, no, no, I can't park. I don't want to touch it. You then, shouldn't be driving. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, there is certainly that part of it. Yeah. And that's a, as an instructor, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, should you really be driving if you're not able to park? But what I come back to with all this stuff is the word confidence. So, mm -hmm. because people might not have to parallel park every day, mm -hmm. the one, two times they need to, That's it's true. nice to have that system. Very true. It, mm -hmm. it, it only needs to work once to be worthwhile, but when you rely on it, the target fixation yeah. of looking mm -hmm. down yeah. here mm -hmm. when you're reversing to park, mm -hmm. That's the reliance that you're kind of like, uh, right? So it's always a balance. You know, we talked about what do you learn when you learn how to drive? Do you learn how to be um, predictable on the road or do you actually learn what to do when the vehicle's mm -hmm. doing things you don't expect? Right. Same thing here is like, I might not drive in snow every day. So the few times I do, all train progress control gives me confidence to drive away off the icy parking lot. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're using it every day, I question, are you really fit to drive? Yeah. You know, it, there's got to be a balance. And the problem is, as soon as there needs to be a balance, there's always the guys that'll take it to the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get, I, I see the idea. I get the convenience. Being able to have these two cameras, do you really need it? 
-hmm. No, but to protect the tires. Oh, they're so yeah. handy. Yeah. yeah. Right? It's yeah. How, yeah. how many times you see on the sidewalk you know, all these tire marks? Yeah. Right. It's like, ow. The curb rash. Yeah. I noticed that you're on automatic on your terrain response. Yes. Have you played around with it? I, oh, I've made him play a little okay. bit. Okay, well, with there, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And I had a good question. Yes. One of the persons yeah. to this morning, he noticed his differentials. He says, I'm seeing these, you know, yeah. lighting yeah. up and. Is that you know? I'm, yeah, it's your your, yeah. your differentials are locking up. Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. I said yeah. Well, I'm good. That, I'm very happy that you noticed that. But yeah. yeah, it's electronic. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. It's not mechanical. It's like used to. You just partial and full lock. Like right yeah. now they're doing partial. What's partial. what what's what's happening? What is the purpose of doing partial versus just locked and unlocked? So if it's a full lock, the two wheels have to turn at the same speed. Correct. And. If you're going around a corner, the two wheels are taking different lines, they travel different distances. Yes. Same thing when you're driving along like normal, you might not want a full 50-50 split front and back mm -hmm. or side to side. So it's giving you that mix of it knows that if I just let it go the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. one wheel's going to spin and it's not going to drive you forward. Yeah. So it does need that resistance mm -hmm. and it'll dial it up as it feels is necessary based on terrain severity. When it's fully locked, it's because it feels like, you know what, whatever wheel has traction, I want the power to already be there. Okay. Let's lock everything. Okay. I want you to just, just for the fun of yeah, what yeah. we're talking about, yeah, go for it. Go pass it in on to. Um, I know what you you, you want. Yeah. Ruts or grass rock crawl. Yeah, go okay. on rock crawl. You'll see that your differentials are going to be locking up. Way uh, more there. And yeah. be, okay. You see how it's pretty much. Full oh, on. it's yeah. there's no yeah. It's very. It's okay. not doing the exactly. partial as much now. Yeah. It's just. Keep it, and then if, if, if you try it in a straight line, you'll see that they'll stay locked. Okay? Oh, okay. And then as you're going to be turning, Excuse they'll me. probably stay locked again. Oh. Try it in mud and rut. You'll see that when it needs to be locked, it will be locked. But as soon as you're starting to turning your wheels, It'll it will open unlock it up. much quicker than the, the rock oh. crawl. Rock crawl will take a little longer before unlocking as you're turning. Mm -hmm. So it's very aggressive. What are the situations where, other than other than rock crawl, that rock crawl mode would just it would just be the best for the environment and for the truck to get you moving? Is it like the mud and rut mm -hmm. on the terrain response? Yeah, I I I, I, I that's your you go-to. That's exactly. It's a good compromise between yeah. all of them. Okay. 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 It's really a compromise among all of them. So if you're not quite sure in what setting you want to go, that you need to go. Mud and, so like mud and ruts. Really, what um, what about that mode? Does that? Is it just like throttle modulation? Throttle modulation, exactly. It's your, just a your, very... your differentials also are going to be working differently in rock crawl. It's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. Your throttle also, you'll see that you'll notice that it, yeah, yeah. And then uh, on the brakes also, it, it modulates everything. I mean, yeah. it's, it's setting it up for to to be to be at its best in that type of terrain. That's awesome. Good? Yeah, no, perfect. Thank okay, you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Only thing I'm going to ask, stay close to these guys because yeah. I want to get back uh, okay. similar timing as everybody else. Sounds good. All right. So has it been a good day for you? Oh, uh, no, this has been great. Been like, you know, just it's always good learning about different things. Well, I, it gives you a whole whack of B-roll content as well if you yeah. want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully it's a nice time to get out and see things like there. You feel the yeah, you don't feel shift. It. Don't shift. I was gonna speed if it up. If you want to, there's fourth gear, but you see it's still holding you. So it's don't still touch. gonna it's still gonna hold it. Use the cruise control buttons. Push, push, push. There you go. And now look at it. Let it. So when would you want to shift up versus use plus minus? So normally you want to use plus minus because it allows you to select the appropriate speed. Okay. But the shifting comes from your intuition and thinking of listen to the engine does it sound like it's really starting to work okay because you're hearing that nice little burble going on right now we're gonna yeah. go to the right here and as you start to approach 2000 you start to hear it turn more into a whine right right what is that it it's just now we're getting into the engines working harder because we're in low range okay. so that would be where i normally tell people the happy spot is 16 to 1800 rpms Okay. If you're hit, because there you see, you can yeah. see as you're going above two. It's starting, I can hear the note You can changing. feel it, you can hear the note yeah. change, you can feel it in the throttle response, it becomes too twitchy. Yeah. So that's, so that's, where, that's where I'd want to go into four. So 16 to 1800 is ideal. 
it for what for we're doing what here. What we're doing, yeah. Like it, that's again where experience. There is no rep. rep yeah. There, there's nothing you can do to replicate experience. Yeah. Now you see we're going along like this, but you see how we're starting to be a little more thrown around and yeah. a little less rolled around. So you shifted down because you know you want it a little lower. Yeah. You see how you're already at 1500 and now we're at a happier speed. Yeah. The engine note is just that happier war. Right. Uh, so yeah. you follow your intuition, right? It's it's not like I'm telling you anything brand new you've never heard of. Right. It's the same thing learning to drive a manual. Yeah. When do you shift? Well, you, when it, it when yeah. you know when you shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's like when you know you need to shift. I, like it's, a thousand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at me bragging at what I can red light. Okay, sorry, nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. It, like, again, you see, so it, you've got that throttle response. It's great. Uh, so, right now, you're in sand mode. Uh, so, sorry, mud and ruts. Yeah. So, look, same gear. Same gear. But different... Mode. Feel, yeah, and I you just can felt feel it the getting pedal. heavy. Hey, you're suddenly, or, it's yeah. not quite as touchy on yeah. you, is it? So you don't have quite the same fine tune control. Right. Nice but angle it, there. That's it. It's a great right. angle. And uh, if we hit that's, angles, 15. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, the best I've seen is 49. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was, it was nuts. You're like <laughs> hanging on. Oh, and they did that to us as instructors too. So yeah. the blind time as we're getting acclimatized to the course. Yeah. They're like, okay, climb the dune. Okay. Climb, climb, climb. Okay, now turn across it. Are you sure? Yeah. Just do it. And we're a car of instructors. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're fine. Turn down. This is all stuff we know, right? Like, yeah, okay. And you turn and it's just soft and sliding down oh, really? oh, oh, oh. so you know this is where you know you're fine tuning okay you asked about shifting you can feel it's not responsive we're in the same yeah right we now before. it's not yeah there's second and look at how the pedal is yeah. suddenly and now it's like way and it downshifted oh, yeah. oh you I, I downshifted okay. for you so again all i do is change the mode where you, here's mud and ruts instead same gear. Same gear, but but look at how much more. So now it's is. way yeah 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 yeah. Oh. So there's a few things. It, it all works together. Yeah. Okay. It's all a matter of number one with terrain response. Yeah. Recognize what kind of traction you have. Okay. Because if I'm driving in a snowstorm, okay, mm -hmm. and that snow is champagne powder. Mm -hmm. Is it really like hard packed gravel? Is it really like grass? No. Or is it more like sand? More like sand. That's the type of traction you have. Yeah. So that's what we're... Right. Same thing if you're driving in a spring thaw. Yeah. And it's that thick, wet, heavy slush. Yeah. Is it really snow? Or is it more like mud? Right. How do you want the vehicle to respond if it's that heavy stuff that'll pull you back? Well, I want the torque response. I don't want that mushy pedal. And then there's everything else that goes with it. Okay. But that's kind of where we started talking just about this. Mm -hmm. And we've played with the gearing, but that's mm -hmm. again where, okay, what might be right in second gear in this mode is not is not the same feeling as second gear in another mode. I love that. Let me ask you while we're in this incline, yeah. he'll start assist. Okay. How does that work? What's the point of it? Like So just so I'm clear, so he'll start assist. Yes, please, we should be there in the next five minutes. Thank you. So he'll start assist, just so I'm sure we're talking about the same thing, is essentially if you come off the brakes right now, the vehicle will not roll back. Correct. So at this point, we don't really teach people two-foot driving. Right. Okay? In a manual, in a we do the shifter, Yep. find the bite point, and then, and then release, and you drive. Yeah. We don't have that anymore. So now we have the brake pedal, mm -hmm. and you need that time to come over. Okay. And you don't want it rolling back. So that's where the hill start assist is great because it's just, it holds me here. And then as soon as I start to roll on, the brakes start to release and it feels seamless. So instead of that in the past where it would roll backwards as I jump from one to the other. It'll keep me there. So, and this is again, and now you see, look at it, hold that yeah. gear. Cause we, and it it's thought locked we were in everything. It thinks we're in mud, rock crawl mode right now. I uh, guarantee okay. you that's what it's in. Uh, I mean, right, because everything's locked. Because I put you back in auto. Okay. So now we take control and look at it shift immediately. And it, uh, okay. Okay, so that, to what we talked about, auto mode. Can yep. it anticipate? No, it can only predict what am I on. Well, yep. I'm on a hill, 
and do I really want to do do I want to let it roll what am I doing right so you know the, there it's doing so many different things mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna grab Linda again okay uh, it does so many different things that you know we're scratching the surface how it all comes together mm -hmm. so how it all comes together I mean that's the magic right right Where, what you saw there, the hill start assist, do you really need it? Well, no, because I can always use my left foot on the brakes, but who actually drives two foot? Right. The comfort, the convenience, the how do I make you a better driver, and how many people come up your butt when you're there in traffic. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. Mechanical diff versus electronic diff. Uh, great <laughs> question. <laughs> the benefits of either, because there's pros and cons, I feel like, do, both. So, yes, uh, look, electronic diff, I have no control. The electronic diff, if I am clear with my throttle input, yeah. then it will work out what I need to move me forward, but I cannot manually say lock now. Okay. Right. Mechanical diff, if I know what I'm doing, I can lock it before it, should, before it gets to a point where the system senses I should be locked. Right. So it's that anticipation versus reaction. Okay. Um, the pros and cons, do you know how you, what you're doing? Because if you're someone right. building a purpose-built off-road vehicle, right. I'd probably point you mechanical. Right. But that purpose-built off-road vehicle will not be able to do everything we just did and then drive onto the pavement and go right. around a corner at 120 yeah. and feel good doing it. Right. And that's where mechanical versus this, on-road performance. Yeah. Right. So as you're as you're squeezing the throttle around corners, how is the electronic diff managing that power uh -huh. versus the mechanical, which is either open or closed yeah. or limited slip? Right. And yeah. even then, the limited slip it's the liquid, right? It's not really a switch you're throwing mm -hmm. or anything. So yeah, I mean, more and more this is the hard part. More and more it comes down to: Are you willing to pay the repair bill? Right. And do you know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I take away the sharp edges, like I said, I can sit here and be that asshole and look at me hit low range the whole way. Yeah. But it won't do it. It won't do it. I can't break it. Mechanical diff, if you've got the switch and I'm doing this the whole time, you want to see it break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. So, yeah. Oh, he's a good man for Ooh. anticipating that. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we had to... <laughs> Thank you. Is it, Thank that's you. what happened, right? Yeah. People were going up there last time. Uh no. Well, I you know you, you didn't know if you he, yeah you had to turn here, so yeah. that I I had you stop say yeah. okay this is where we have to go because you would have probably yeah I would have just gone back up to the saloon. Three lines. Three lines. Three lines. Okay. Well, Thanks, three. Jenny. We're we're right there now. Thank you for doing this. Poor girl, she's had to run alone on her own. <laughs> you guys seem like a great, great team, the three of you. <laughs> That's just the public face. <laughs> <laughs> My back is yeah. full of whip marks, <laughs> scratches on the neck. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what did you say to me? <laughs> <laughs> got a great team. All right, let me hop out. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you.